so it began. The creation of the world had started to take form. Merely just because God's power was so immense that by the speaking of his word, the voice that came out of God created everything that we have around us today. Here's the beauty of it. It didn't stop with God. No. He continued to create something when he created, that's right, us. That's where we pick up today. So, good morning, Summit Kids. My name is Artist Enrique, and we are going through the story of the beginning of the universe, the world that he created, everything from the, from the smallest plant to the largest planet, all were created by the speaking of his voice. He said it, and it was. And look around. Could anything create something more beautiful but than that of a divine creator? No. Now, I know that, that some of you are still young, and, and, and when you get older, you're probably going to hear conflicting stories that God didn't create all this. Well, we know from God's word that we can trust in it. That it's alive and it's, away, it's well with my soul. That the things that God said are the things that are. So before we get any farther, let's go ahead and let's start this off with prayer so that God's divine power can be with us as we continue to create. Sounds good? All right. Dear God, Lord, we love you. Thank you for all that you have given us. Thank you that you have created such a majesty, not for your pleasure, but for ours. We, Father, get to inherit all of these beautiful things that you've made. Let us be responsible of it, Father. Let us be the best that we can, Lord, for all that you've given us. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's continue to worship him and thank the Creator for what he's given us. Let's worship. I stand before you now The greatness of your
That's right. He has also made us brave. (laughs) We do not have to fear when we know the Creator has created this spirit of courage in us. Amen and amen. All right, let's go ahead and let's get our creation pack out. Uh, What we're going to need is your creation booklet. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go to... Oh, you're... I'm sure your drawings are fantastic, days one through five. I'm sure they're beautiful. So just like last week, you're going to still need crayons, markers, pens, or pencils, or whatever works for you. Even if you got paint like me, that works too, all right? So go to week number two, and it's going to have the last two days, day six and day seven. That's where we left off at, okay? And then underneath is a little activity that we'll do later as well, okay? Also, you're going to need your dino story. All right, let's go ahead and get that out. There it is, because this also was something that I know it might sound funny, but it's true. God created everything, even the dinosaurs. All right, so let's go ahead. And we did week number one, so we're going to go to week number two. Yes, yes, it's like a frisbee. All right, here we go. Week number two, let's see what we got. And... Here we go. We are continuing with the creation story with week number two, God created Adam and Eve. Yes, Adam and Eve. They are more than just a story. They are people. They were the first ones to be created. So on day number six, let's pick up where we left off last week, okay? And it says, uh, as we continue on in Genesis chapter two, it says, That God said, let the land produce living creatures, in verse 24, according to their kinds. Livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. There it is. All right, let's get creative and let's create some some animals, right? Let's make some animals here. Okay, let's, uh, how about a platypus? Should I make a platypus? Uh, Okay, so we've got the... We've got the, the ground, so let's, uh, let's get some ground because they weren't walking on the water at this time, okay? They, they weren't doing the whole Jesus thing, walking on the water. They had the land. So let's see, let's create, how about we do a effluent, right? <laughs> I like effluent, right? All right, so let's see if I can, there it is, okay. So as you're creating your animals, Think of what this is looking like when God's speaking it. All of these animals coming to life. There we go. Okay. The beauty of what God is speaking here and what he's saying is coming to form before his very self. All right, we'll get a little, some more colors in here a little bit, make them a little... Gray, nice. How's yours coming along? What are you drawing? I want to see your pictures, so make sure to post later. Maybe you made some tigers. Maybe you made some uh, lions. Uh, maybe some bears. Oh my! <laughs> you could be making anything. What if we did? Maybe how about a a cheetah? Maybe oh yeah, a cheetah. There we go. Okay. Oh no! It's, I hope the cheetah doesn't eat the elephant. But here's the beauty of it. There was no 
pain in the garden, okay? All of the animals got along perfectly fine. They weren't fighting, okay? They didn't go after each other. They laid peacefully with each other. But something happened. But we have day number six, that in the land, God created animals. But it didn't stop there. What else does it say? Let's keep reading. It says, continuing on, So God had formed from the grounds the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air, creatures living on the ground. So at this point now, listen to this. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. We talked a little bit about this last week. Why does it say our? Because it didn't stop with just God speaking. God was speaking in the presence of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What we've come to know as the Holy Trinity, the Godhead. Now, how can three be one? Well, it's, it's, it's very simple. Let's look at it this way. You've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are God. They are united as one. So, have you ever had ice cubes in your drink before? Yeah, I'm sure. Um, have you ever seen your mom... Uh, stew something on the stove and there's steam that comes out of it? Sure, right? How about have you ever had a glass of water? Right. Think of it. All of those different elements are still water. The water you drink, if put in the freezer, will freeze and become solid. So now you have ice. But water, if boiled really hot, becomes what? A steam which is still water. It is still water. No matter what form it takes, it's all still the same thing. How have you ever, maybe you've ever eaten a, a egg before, okay? You've got the outer shell of the egg, the egg shell, right? And then you've got the white inter egg, right? And then you've got the yolk. Three parts, all as one. That is the same concept of the Trinity. So when God's saying, let us make man in our image, he is saying to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit that we want him to be in our likeness. He says, so God made man in his own image, and it was to rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and the livestock over all the earth. And he did this, and it's really cool. He did this by breathing in to the nostrils of the man. He made him out of the dirt of the ground. Isn't that amazing? So maybe you guys have made stuff with clay. Well, where does clay come from? It comes from the ground. So God merely did the same thing. He took what he had created and he birthed life out of the ground. But it says that he created man and woman. All right? So we've got our man there and he gave them beautiful, beautiful names. Okay? So now that we've got the man Let's go ahead and get our woman. Got it? Okay. I want to see how your pictures look later, okay? There we go. There we go. Let's see. I imagine she probably had red hair. So let's maybe, let's maybe give her some red hair. There we go. Yep. There we go. Very nice. Man and woman he made in his image. They both had responsibilities. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Adam was in charge 
of tending over the ground. A big, big responsibility. But here's the thing. They were living in a very, very beautiful land. Yep, it was called the Garden of Eden. Indeed. So here's the thing, okay? Now, after God looked at all of his creation, he said something. It is good. But it didn't stop there. It says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creation he had done. Now, I don't know about you, but I like naps. <laughs> I, I like taking naps. I like to get cozy, and I like to get all bundled up and lay down, okay? But here's the thing. God wasn't tired, okay? Although it said he rested, it's saying that he was basking in the beauty of his creation. He looked at it. He didn't make a bed for himself and go to bed. <laughs> he wasn't sleeping. So I'm drawing some Z's here that kind of represent, like, you know, when you're dreaming. You're sleeping and in bed. But it wasn't that God said, I'm going to go night, night, cozy, cozy, bye-bye. No. He stopped and looked at the beauty of his creation. He created the, the, the beauty of, of the light, and it was magical, and, and, and he spoke it into existence, and it happened. And that light on the first day was to separate from the darkness. He said, no, on the first day, let there be light, and he created light. But then on the second day, he created the heavens. It was to separate the waters from the earth. He's looking at this and he's basking in how beautiful it is. And then he goes over to the third day. He created the seas and the dry land that came out of it. And he looked at it and he said, it was good, it's beautiful. Look at how majestic this is. That land has sprung up from the seas. And then, and then, he did on that same day, on the third day, he created the beautiful vegetation and plants and trees and flowers. It just keeps getting more and more beautiful. That was on the third day. Then in the heavens above, he created even more. He said, let there be a governing light for the day and let there be a governing light for the night, creating seasons and creating days, still having his light present. You ever realize that at night when it gets dark, it's not 100% dark. You know why? Because he created stars in the sky to continue to illuminate in the darkness. But the governing light he did give was the moon. Here's the thing. He still continued to create more and more. He said, let us create birds to fly in the air. Let us create Creatures to be in the ocean seas. Imagine now the beauty of the ocean filling up with all of these beautiful sea creatures and beautiful, beautiful birds flying in the air. He's looking at this and he's still saying, how beautiful, how magnificent, how glorious. And it doesn't stop there. He keeps going, he says, let us, let us now create land animals 
and, and, and they just became bigger and beautiful and glorious. But then man came alive through the dirt of the ground sprung up and beautiful. All of this is happening before his eyes and he's basking in the beauty of his creation. This is how beautiful our God is. I don't know about you, but this is something that is worth worshiping. He is something worth giving all the praise to. It is something that I have to look and see just how majestic it is. I don't know about you, but I can imagine on that day when God was looking back and seeing how beautiful it was. He said, I'm so happy that I get to share this with my people, that we get to live in this forever or so he thought. On the seventh day, he rested and said, it was good. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? Now, let's see. just a little bit of an animation of the Bible story that we just read. And you can see the movements and the colors and the creation of what happened in the beginning with the book of Genesis. God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals. So God created human beings in his own image, a male and a female. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. I have given you everything that has life. Then. God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. Evening passed, and morning came, marking the sixth day. On the seventh day, God had finished his creation, so he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. Well, I'm sure that your murals turned out fantastic, just like mine. <laughs> is it a great? Well, here's the thing. I want to show you something, okay? I want to show you something that on our hands, these right here, is a insignia of God's unique divine creation. So you're going to need markers for this. If you've got paint, you could use paint too. But you're going to need something that you can, here we go, draw on your fingers with. Okay? So go grab your markers. If you've got your markers, use your markers. If you've got paint, use your paint. But here's what I want you to do. Okay? I want you to use a paintbrush if you're using paint. And I want you to, to put it on each of your fingers. Your thumb, your ring, your index. All of your five fingers... I want you to color the tips of them. If you've got marker, easy, easy, easy. Just go ahead and color the tips of it, okay? Now, I'm going to get my paint here, and here's the beautiful thing. Once you've got that on your sheet, okay? On your sheet, you've got little circles, and in those circles, you're going to put a dablet. Got it? <laughs> I've got mine. You're going to put a dablet, okay? of your thumb inside each of those circles. Ready? I'm doing mine. Are you doing yours? Yep. Okay, here we go. Okay, get it all in there. Okay. Don't put too much, just a little bit, okay? You don't need a lot because if you look closely, you're going to see these little ridges, okay? Little lines, kind of. Right? Do you see it? Right. Okay? If you use too much paint, use less paint and put it underneath. But I want you to be able to see the beauty okay, that is coming out of your fingertips. Hmm. This is a unique mark of the signature of our creator. <laughs> so I want you to hear about how amazing, again, 
this creator is. So, hey, Alfonso, Alfonso, get ready, buddy, get ready. Oh, I'm still just so hungry. Oh, goodness. Let's, oh, let's see. Oh, look, some berries. Nummy, 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 nummy. Oh, 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 you're back. How nice of you to come back and see Alfonso, the Vegetarosaurus. <laughs> well, I, I, I must say, I never thought that Carosaurus's cooking would be so bad, but maybe I should have looked at her LinkedIn profile clearer. Anyways, well, I assume you want to continue in our Bible verse, right, right, right? Yeah, you remember what it is, right? In the book of Psalms. Now, it's amazing because later on, a king, we come to find out, wrote the book of Psalms. Now, some people say that the lions are the king of the jungle, but look at me. <laughs> Can you imagine a lion coming up against this? <laughs> Never. But the king of kings is the one that created all of us, and we want to make sure that we acknowledge just how amazing he is. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and let's do our Bible verse together. Ready? Psalms 139. 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well, right? Isn't that so great that the king of kings, that the creator of all, maybe he could have made Karen to make better stew, but that's okay. You know, I've got berries. Nummy, 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 berry, berries, nummy, nummy, berries. Yes. But he made us so that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So you don't be, need to be scared of my big, sharp teeth. No, no, not at all. Because he is the one that knows it all. And he knew that even me, a big old dinosaur, <laughs> would come to praise him. Well, I guess I should probably take some berries back to Karen, give him some flavor. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. I don't know about you, but I really like that Alfonso guy. <laughs> but I'm not surprised he's hiding deep in the jungle to get away from Karen. So, okay. So, let's continue to listen to what this story says. Okay? Psalms 1, 3, 9, verse 1, 4. Psalms 139. Verse 14, listen to this. Alfonso said it great, but it keeps going. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. But it continues to say, my frame was not hidden from you. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them ever came to be. You have been created to create because the spirit of the creator has created that inside of you. Why do you think we have the things that we have today? <laughs> It's because he said to go, continue, reproduce, be fruitful, and multiply. The most amazing mind that we have is because a creator, divine, holy God created it inside of us and didn't hide it. The things that we make are for the world to see how great our big creator God is. And remember... It was Jesus and the Holy Spirit with them creating this beauty. And on that last day, on that last day, they went back and they just saw and they basked in the glory and they rested in how beautiful this all turned out. <laughs> God doesn't need to sleep. God doesn't get tired. He was setting an example for us. That when we go out and we work, and when we do a good job, give yourself some time to rest. Give yourself to look back 
at what you did. Be joyful of it. Many of you will grow up and you will start working a job. Some, some jobs might be harder than others. But regardless, when you get that day off, you think and you praise the Lord for what he's done, what he's given you, what he's allowed you to have. This is why we have the Sabbath, the seventh day. This is why we meet at church. But remember, <laughs> the church isn't a building. It's you. It's me. It's Pastor Jacob. It's Pastor Jeff. It's all of us. We are the church. We go out all week long and we tell them about the good news of the gospel. And then we give ourselves time to rest and regroup. The gospel of Mark tells us that Jesus went in a fishing boat out and he said, let us rest and prepare ourselves for the job ahead. Isn't that beautiful? Now, we're not done just yet. If you go to the very end of your creativity log, you'll see your tree, okay? We did week number one, okay? God created the whole world, okay? Today's big idea. Ready? Take it off. Number two, God created us in his image. You are fearfully, wonderfully made. If you were created in the image of God, it means that you are beautiful. It means that you are loved. It means that no matter what people say about you, to you, or of you, mm -mm -mm. what does God say? You are created in him. Maybe there's things you don't like about your body, okay? I don't have any hair. <laughs> That's okay, because God still loves me because he created me. So I love myself. When you take time to rest in God and to thank him for everything he's done, thank him for the life he's given you because you are bold, you are strong, you are beautiful, you're an overcomer. No weapon formed against you shall prosper because the King of kings and the Lord of lords is the one that created in you the beautiful life that you have today. So go out, seize the day, be as creative as you want. Think as big as you want. Imagine as big as you want. Shout and scream and jump and be as happy as you want because the Spirit of God, the Creator of all, is the one living in you. That's beautiful, right? I know it is. I want you to live in that. Remember who our Creator is. Remember that Jesus died so we could have life and life in abundance. Make him your savior today if you haven't already. We can say your ABCs right now. Shall we do it? Absolutely. Jesus, we admit, Father, that we are sinners in need of a savior. So we repent, Father, and we're sorry of the things we've done in our life because we believe that you died for our sins. So we see, confess that you were risen and alive. We invite you into our heart and we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, there it is, the beautiful story of creation, the seven days at least. With that, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may he cause his face to shine upon you, and until next week, Artis Enrique, be creative.